Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. This video is for the Concord kids. They're a group of students that are focused on the STEM curriculum and their advisor shot me an email and said some of the stuff that they're working on, it would be really helpful if they had a video that would show them some of the basics of what a milling machine does. And this really struck a nerve with me because coincidentally, I was just talking to a local Ohio area um, overview, he's, a, he's a responsible for all of the trades curriculums and they have a huge interest in the welding program. They can't get kids interested in machining, which baffles me. And I think part of it is because welding is big in central Ohio with a lot of the oil and gas and people think if they're welders, they get to drive big trucks and get muddy and go to job sites. And hey, that's, that's cool to people, I totally get it. But, but to think that they're choosing that because they don't even know what machining is, they, they have no idea. And hey, I was there once too. I didn't grow up, uh, my grandfather was a steel fabricator. I didn't grow up uh, with bridge ports and, and milling machines and so forth, so I get it. So I would love to make this little video and show people what metal cutting and machining is. What I wanna do today, two really basic things. We're gonna show some test cuts on a piece of aluminum with a bridge port milling machine. This mill is probably 50 years old, but it runs great. And then what we'll do is we'll move over and we'll take similar type of cuts on the Tormach CNC machine, which is a computerized version of basically the same thing. This is our bridge port milling machine. It's kind of like a drill press, but a lot more. It's similar to a drill press in that we've got a handle that raises and lowers a tool in the quill. But if you'll notice, this quill is really fat and it's actually really strong compared to a bench top type drill press. But what makes the machine really different from say just a drill press is we've got these handles. And I can rotate these handles and move the table left to right or the X axis. And then I can use the handle in the front here and move the table back and forth or front to back in the Y axis. So not only can we cut down like you do with a drill bit, but we can use an end mill just like that's in here right now and cut on the side of a piece of solid metal, just like that. There's a ton more that this machine can actually do, but that's really the essence of what, what uh, we need it to do. And that's what we're gonna take a look at today. So not only does the machine have to be really strong and really rigid, but to be useful, it's gotta be accurate. Accuracy is just key in metalworking and machining. And for this machine, which remember, it's like 50 years old, we can still do that. The key are the graduated dials on the handles. We can use these dials to accurately machine and measure distances in one thousandth of an inc increment measurements. And if that doesn't sound precise to you, a thousandth of an inch, that's crazy. A sheet of printer paper is four thousandths of an inch. Let's take a look at that accuracy. Our dial here is on zero. We'll go ahead and rotate it. I'll do it slowly for the camera to 20 thousandths. So that's about five sheets of paper that we should be moving the machine in. Enough talking, let's see this thing in action. Safety glasses on folks. What we'll do is we'll slide the work piece under our end mill. We're gonna use a two flute, pretty large diameter end mill. And we'll just go ahead and move the quill down. So right on top of the work piece, that locks the quill in place. I'll come off the work piece and I can actually lift the table up just a hair. We'll turn her on. And let's see if we can face off the top of this part. So nice and easy, we'll come over. And you should see we're making a nice chip. Machine doesn't sound too loud. And because this work piece is at a little bit of an angle, we'll probably run out as you see right there. So okay, we'll come back and we'll just keep cleaning it up. You can go a little faster if you want. Again, folks, we're cutting through metal right now. I think it's pretty cool. You wanna to try to be smooth with your motion. That'll make for a better cut. Come back right over here. Looks like that's all we'll get removed at this height, if you will. We'll stop the machine. And if you feel that, it is silky smooth. And that's what's really cool. It's a really nice quality cut. So that was cool. We sort of cut the top of it. Let's see if we can do a little bit of a heavier cut and let's actually see if we can measure the accuracy. So we're gonna unlock the quill, lower the tool down. 
And now what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of a cut off this one side. Then we'll use our, our dials and our digital readout to measure how far over we cut. And let's see if we measure the part that we end up with and see if we were accurate. So here we go. Fire up. Pretty cool, you can see the chips flying off that machine. Should be a nice surface finish. It sounds good, you don't hear chatter. Real nice cut. Nice and steady. Let's take a look at that. Beautiful, I like that. Let's take a side cut now and see if we can clean up the side of this part and then move over. We'll measure how far we move and we'll see if that distance makes sense and is accurate. This is a two flute quarter inch end mill. Let's fire up. Nice and smooth. Look at that, great surface finish. Very happy with that. Now, we'll come back, and we cut that at zero on our dial, so let's move all the way over. And if we cut it at two, we'll see if that makes sense. Now that's a little bit too much for me to take in one pass, so we'll lift up the quill, and we'll take a little bit of a shallower pass at first, and we'll do a few more deeper. Nice and easy. Come down a little more. You could also come up with the knee. Either way works. So let's use our digital calipers, just sort of like a tape measure, but pretty accurate. And let's see what we got. Gonna fit them in here. We're at, we're at 1.75 inches. So let's think here, does that make sense? Well, at first you would think, no, I thought we went from zero to two inches. But if you think about it, when we were cutting on the left side, we were at zero, but remember, we're using a quarter inch end mill. So zero is the center line or the middle of the tool. So it was cutting one eighth of an inch or 0 0.125 off on the left. Then we, we moved over to the right we cut another quarter, eighth of an inch, or 0.125. So in the end, we've removed 0.25. So we went from zero to two, but we back out that tool diameter, 1.75, folks. Pretty cool, huh? Here is a CNC milling machine. And believe it or not, it's actually incredibly similar to the bridge port we just used. The difference is that instead of using a hand and cranking those knobs, we've got motors and they're driven by computers, which take G-code that we sort of program in, and it's those computer, computerized motors that move the machine back and forth, which is really cool because you can end up with a very easy way to automate the cutting as well as create complex cuts. And if you want to watch a really good video, in my opinion, on a basic way to build and understand, I just did one where I used an Arduino and a very inexpensive shield called a garble shield, and we built from nothing a uh, pen plotter that we use to use a pen and create a pattern. It's pretty cool stuff, folks, and it's really not expensive to get into. So this machine, again, it's just like the bridge port. Underneath here, we've got screws and motors, and that drive the table back and forth. And we can use the computer keyboard. We can go left, we can go right, we can go backward and away from us, and we can go down, and we can come back up. Now that was me 
controlling it myself, I've got a little program in here, and what it's going to do is it's going to trim this block, sort of like what the bridge port did, and we'll measure it afterwards and see what it looks like. And then it's also going to create a circular pattern in the middle. And that's something that would be a lot harder to do if you didn't have a machine that could con calculate and control the steppers with such precision. Okay, so the spindle starts up. It approaches the side of the part here. You'll hear the coolant kick on. Those two gray lines have coolant. And you notice when it didn't just jab itself into the part, there was a nice smooth ramp in. Coming along, you can see the chips flying off. Looks really nice. And the reason that end mill is coated is it's a special coating, different coatings for different materials that help improve the cut quality or tool life. Lots of really cool things like that. Again, though, it's all being driven by the computer here and the motors that you see under that are underneath this machine should be pretty darn accurate. The proof will be in the pudding. We'll have to measure it here when it's done. Just about coming down home stretch. And if you watch closely, again, it's going to ramp out. We'll take a nice little curve right about now, which hopefully will mean there's no tool mark where the part uh, started and finished. Now we're going to cut a circle, and instead of plunging straight down into it, you'll notice it did a little, it's called an interpolation, but think of it like a, uh, a, like a curly Q type of slide and that really reduces the chip load or it's a lot easier on the machine and the tool, nice and easy going into the part like that. And if you think about it, it's cutting a circle like this is using, using both uh, the X and the Y axis at the same time and that's what's let us cut a perfect circle like this, which again is something that would be a lot harder to do on the bridge port, but is quite easy on a CNC. There we have it. Let's grab our calipers and let's see if we really got what we hope here. Look at that folks. 2.249, we're about one thousandth under. So across that whole distance, we're less than one quarter the thickness of a piece of paper off. I'll take that any day folks. I hope everybody enjoyed that really brief episode of NYC CNC and sort of basics on both manual and how a CNC machine works. For those of you regular subscribers, I know this was really basic, but I'm really hoping to help and encourage anyone involved with STEM or any sort of youth engineering and science and technology. It really is so cool. I would encourage you to reach out to either your local STEM program or FIRST Robotics or anything you can do because uh, I tell you, the world needs more engineers and scientists and, and metal workers and stuff like that. To the Concord kids, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you learn and understand the types of equipment out there. A lot of it isn't expensive anymore. That's what's really cool. I did a video about buying this Bridgeport, which I bought for less than $2,000. I know that sounds like a lot, but it also produces money. It's not a huge investment. Some really cool opportunities out there. I certainly love being a machinist and being able, what I, being able to do what I love in this career and field and the more we can help people understand and see what's out there and enable them the better off we are so thanks for watching i'll see you this wednesday for the wednesday widget otherwise take care see you soon thanks folks